Hey, so I want to show you a little bit about AWS Learner Lab. And, uh, you know, this is something that you would probably see as soon as your um, instructor has uh, sent over the invites to you to join AWS Academy. And so once you're in that AWS Academy, which is basically a Canvas shell, you'll click on a link for AWS Learner Lab and it'll bring you here. This AWS Learner Lab is going to be your portal for your way to access all the AWS services. So whenever you want to work on a lab that requires AWS like EC2 or um, RDS or all these different instances, you're going to have to come here first. This is going to start up your AWS instance. And so what you want to do is you want to click on Start Lab. When you click Start Lab, that's going to send a command over to AWS where you're going to be able to get everything kind of loaded up. Whenever you don't have Start Lab running, your instance of AWS is, is closed. It's kind of just frozen in time uh, for you. Once you hit the Start Lab, it does take a little bit of time to start running. But once you see that it's running, you'll see here that the green dot will, will come. That green dot means that your AWS status uh, that means it's running. Uh, when it's yellow, it's starting up. When it's red, it's going to stop. You'll see here also a timer. This timer here tells you how long it's going to stay up. Now, as time goes on, there's a countdown that's four hours. At four hours, it's going to shut down the services for you. So you'll have to be keeping the idea that your websites or any of your RDS or EC2, any of your servers that you're putting up in the cloud are only going to be running while this is while this is started. Um, also, you know, this is a great way for you to manage your budget because you can see here we uh, we have our credit here, what our budget is. Um, whenever the services are stopped, this budget might not uh, will be you know kind of paused in a way, um, so you won't be uh, losing the, the the student credit that you got um, from AWS Academy. Now there is some things about the budget that you need to be thinking about, and you can see here under the Learning Lab documentation. There's a lot uh, here about, um, you know, preserving your budget. It's interesting that you can read through this and it's going to teach you a lot about what's going on with AWS. But um, one thing to know about preserving your budget is that some of the, um, some of the instances, like for example, the um, RDS uh, instance can, depending on what one you choose, can still be um, draining from your budget, uh, even whenever you have something stopped so if you hit the limit on your budget it will cause you to uh, not be able to run uh, the learner lab anymore now um, going back over to uh, the learner lab environment you can see here now my time has gone down a little bit to three hours and 58 minutes um, you know if i'm thinking oh, i'm going to be working a lot i can just hit start lab again and that's going to uh, extend my thing back to four hours so that's something that you can uh, keep doing over and over to get your um, time going up now um, whenever you want to connect to your AWS instance um, you're going to want to click on this AWS link here and what that does is that opens you up into your Amazon uh, web services you see I have something kind of mess up for me but I go back and click here it's going to take me to my Amazon Web Services and now you can see here I have my console home this is where you can see all the different types of services that you can run if you click here on view all services you'll see the types of services that are offered EC2 is going to be one that we're going to be um, working with a lot and then if you look here uh, for the RDS that's also for the databasing so if you want to build up a back end, <clears throat> if you want to have a front end server, RDS and EC2 are going to be the ones that you're uh, interested in. Now, AWS is a you know, vast so an amount of services. You can look on here. The list keeps going on and on with all the different things that you can do in, in AWS. But normally for geospatial development, we're looking at running servers or running databases and in some cases doing some machine learning um, and so those are all things that you can think about um, about what working with um, if you want to you know run a service you just click on it and that's where you'll be able to uh, launch an instance 
for that service. Um, now, for connecting to services, um, you're going to want to do that through SSH tunneling. And so if we go um, back over to uh, to our learner lab and we click on SSH access, for example, uh, you can get some idea of how the type of SSH tunneling you have to do in order to connect to your uh, to your instance. Now, basically, the kind of thing that needs to go on is that you'll have to get yourself an elastic IP address and um, and then also set up an EC2 instance. So, you know, in future videos, uh, we'll look at that. But um, the big thing that you need to know about is that there's um, some uh, keys that you'll need to get from AWS in order to work. And this is in the form of a PEM file and then also the command line interface um, coding. And so those informations uh, that, you'll, that are important is going to be back in the uh, Learner, AWS Learner Academy, a Learner Lab. And then if I look here and I click on AWS Details, that's where you're going to see this information like your AWS CLI. And then here is your PEM file. These are going to be the two keys that you're going to need in order to access services in the future. So, you know, that's just a quick tour of the Learner Lab itself. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can do here, um, but the, the key things that come from the Learner Lab is your keys for your encrypted communications, your timer for your lab as it's running, um, the status of your lab with the link going over to the AWS dashboard and the ability to start and end your lab. Now, the reset button, stay away from that one. Uh, if you click that, that will actually reset your entire session and have it start from zero. So uh, if you're trying to build something like for a project, you want to avoid that button because that will cause you to lose all your work. Um, so that's kind of like the nuts and bolts of the Learner Lab. Let's look at future videos after to see how we set up EC2, RDS, all that kind of thing. So um, anyways, good luck with any of your lab works with AWS.